Hello everybody. In this video I will show you um, the differences between the monofiler coil and the bifiler coil. And after that I will also show you three methods of how you can drive the bifiler coil and what its use cases are. So first off let me show you the patent from Nikola Tesla from 1894. He called it coil for electromagnets and on top here you can see a monofiler coil and here a bifiler coil. It's patent number 512340 if you want to look it up. And right here I've connected a monofiler coil. So this is basically my bifiler coil that consists out of two monofiler coils, the red one and the black one. But I've disconnected the red one, so as you can see here, these two red cables are open and not connected anywhere. And I've just connected the black cables, meaning the black coil, so it is just a monofiler coil. And I connected this to my system that I used in all of my other videos. This is basically just um, yeah to pulse the coil. And I will now show you what is the difference between the monofiler coil and the bifiler coil. So if I power it up, I go to around 12 volts and also turn on my signal generator. You can see I'm using a current of 0.2 amps at around 12 volts. So we have created magnetic field meaning losses and yeah the whole system is lossy by itself and with this um, compass I can also show you the magnetic field that is generated as you can see so this is a yeah basically very lossy system because we don't even have a load attached and we are using quite some power and this is basically not what I want for my system here. So I will show you the difference what this system looks like when I use a bifiler coil. So what I've done here is I've connected the red and the black coil together like it should be in a bifiler coil like in the patent and connected it to my system just as before. And the difference is, if I increase the voltage now to 12 volts again, like before, you will see we have almost no current draw, meaning we are losing or using almost no power. And this is what I want to achieve in my system. So we still create these high voltage impulses, meaning a, a lot of tension in the dielectric field that is created here but we create no magnetic field and you can see this with the compass it doesn't react so we also have created no magnetic field and no losses and this is the benefit of the bifiler coil compared to the monofiler coil in my system so now we come to the part where I will show you three different methods of how you can operate a bifiler coil and for the first one, this will be the simplest one. I've just connected plus and minus of my DC power supply and will use it as a regular electromagnet. And as you can see here, we're using 1.2 volts and 1.5 amps. So this is basic regular electromagnet. And yeah, it creates a quite strong a magnetic field of course that you can see here on the compass it moves depending on where I place it to the coil and this magnetic field is also extending quite far so what we have done here is we've created a basic electromagnet but without the use of any kind of ferromagnetic um, objects or steel. This is just co pure copper coil. And this would be the first use case of yeah, the bifiler coil. 
And for our second use case, I've just connected the spy filer coil directly to my signal generator. And I've also connected the probes of my oscilloscope directly to it, so we can observe the signal that is generated very well. And right now I'm driving the coil at around its resonant frequency of around 30 kilohertz. And as you can see, if I decrease the frequency, the voltage peak to peak will all also go down. And if we come closer to the resonant frequency, the voltage will go up, of course. And if we go past it and increase it even more, it will go down again. And yeah, this is basically how you can amplify the voltage with this coil and when you drive it at the resonant frequency. And this would be the second method of how you can use such a bifilar coil. And now for our third method of driving the bifilar coil, I've connected it the same way as I've seen it before, meaning that I'm driving a MOSFET with a signal generator that switches the MOSFET on and off and this MOSFET switches the DC voltage coming from my power supply. And as you can see again, we're using almost zero power. It's very low current that we're using. And on the oscilloscope, you can see kind of a sine wave signal with peaks of high voltage. This is just what is picked up by the probe when it's laying unconnected next to the system. And if I take the ground of my oscilloscope and just connect it to the source pin of my MOSFET, you will see this sine wave signal that is generated. This would be the, uh, yeah, the transverse electromagnetic waves that are created in the system. But these are of low power and high voltage at around one kilovolt. And if I connect it to the uh, drain pin of my MOSFET, you will see these extremely high voltage spikes. And these spikes are actually way higher than what my oscilloscope can show. So as you could see, the spikes went from up to down and yeah, basically the range of my oscilloscope was limiting what it can show. It can show at the maximum of four kilovolts. So the high voltage impulses that are generated are way higher than these four kilovolts. And we are using almost zero power when doing this. And this is what I think makes this system special because we are generating high voltage impulses, meaning strong tension in a dielectric field around here. And at the same time, we have almost zero power losses, meaning we don't create a magnetic field. And if we um, attach uh, another bifilar coil to the system, we can use this high voltage impulses to drive um, any kind of load. And this would basically be a high voltage transformer that operates at its resonance frequency and has almost zero losses when doing so. So I will just connect two other bifilar coils to the system and show you what I mean with this. And so what I've done here now is I have added two more bifilar coils to my system that I've shown you before. So one on top and one beneath the middle pulsed coil. And these two additional coils are just connected in series together and also connected with one end to the drain of my MOSFET and the other one is my high voltage lead. 
and basically I've connected a green and a yellow cable one from the source of the MOSFET and one from the high voltage lead and yeah, between here we have very high voltage potential and I will show you this if I just increase my voltage again to around 12 volts again we will get an even higher voltage output than before with just one bifiler coil and yeah this basically all happens wirelessly and with this setup we can also quite efficiently um, light lamps and do this also safe so this is a 230 volt light bulb and if I increase the voltage even more you will see it will light up quite bright at a relatively low power consumption and we can also do the same with a fluorescent tube so this one is a bit trickier to start because they need an initial high voltage impulse to like start them as you can see here and now it's fully lit up and I limited my power supply by the amperage so we don't overdrive this one and don't destroy it and I can go even a bit higher and we'll get a bit brighter but I can't do that for very long because yeah as I said this will destroy it so yeah we've basically built a high voltage transformer that is operating very efficiently at its resonant frequency and is capable to drive high voltage appliances without losing much energy or wasting much energy by creating strong magnetic fields. So I hope this gives you a bit of an idea of how a bifiler coil works and what its characteristics are and yeah what you can also do with it because the patterns from Nikola Tesla there was actually not much descriptions it was just called coil for electromagnet and I couldn't really find any more information about this so yeah I hope you got some new information and enjoyed watching this so thanks for watching and goodbye